If you follow the channel, you'll know that I occasionally have issues mispronouncing model names and brand names. So today, right out of the gate, I'm gonna pre-apologize to any Italian out there. Because today we're gonna check out the Venezianico Nereda Maggio Perla. I think I got that right, but if I butched it, forgive me. But this is an Italian style Hulk with a few interesting twists. And this review represents a few firsts for the channel. First time checking an Italian brand and first time seeing a tungsten bezel. But let's get to it. The Nereda Madra Perla is a fairly standard diver when it comes to specs. So you're looking at a 42 millimeter case with a 49 millimeter lug to lug, which is one millimeter longer than I generally prefer. And I think there is just a little bit of overhang here. But overall, it is fairly comfortable on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, and especially with the fitted strap. Now, total thickness is 12.6 millimeters, and that's with a closed case back and a flat sapphire crystal. Water resistance is 200 meters with a signed screw down crown, and it's all powered by Salita SW200. So, again, it's fairly standard for a mid sized diver these days. However, where things get a little interesting, is its set of floating indices, a tungsten insert to the bezel, and its use of a green mother of pearl dial, hence the Madra Perla part of the name. And we'll get to each of those in time. But before we do that, I do need to point out that this watch was sent to the channel by the brand, and I don't need to send it back, hence the promotional tag at the top. Now, just like the specs, the case here is also fairly standard for a diver. It's a mostly brushed case with polished chamfers, and we do have a crown guard over at the right. The lugs seem to have a really narrow and more aggressive angle to them, and that is something I like. Then on the rear, it has a closed stamped case back with the watch's namesake, which was an Italian submarine built in Venice around 1913. So just a cool little bit of history. Back to the front, let's talk about the bezel and its tungsten insert. First off, the bezel action here is fantastic. It's 120 click, unidirectional, no back play, great clicky action, and it's easy to get a hold of and use. Although by far, the tungsten insert is the more interesting aspect here. Now, if you didn't know it, tungsten is a very hard material, and it's generally gonna be heavier yet harder than ceramic. And harder means more scratch resistant. So it's potentially a great option for a bezel. And while a lot of these shots may show the bezel to be more black, that's not actually the case. It's more of a dark gray mirror, like mirror reflective, Seriously, this thing is gonna reflect everything and also be a bit of a fingerprint magnet. So here, it's just in these shots, it's reflecting the dark room behind me. Now, the good of this whole thing is that it's gonna be extremely scratch resistant, to the point you'll probably never have to worry about it. But it's also so reflective that it can be a little bit of a distraction depending. Although in this particular case, with this green mother pearl dial, I think it actually works pretty well with the design as the dial has this natural chaotic pattern to it that shimmers in the light. Now they say it's more reminiscent of looking at the Aurora Borealis, but when I look at it, I think it looks more like looking into deep water, green deep water. But in that way, I think having both the dial and bezel catch the light as they do works well together. It creates this strange captivating presence. However, the downside to all of this is that the watch can catch a bit of glare at times as well. So just be warned. One other interesting aspect of the dial is that the indices aren't actually attached to it. In fact, the only thing attached to the dial is the framing of the date and this logo, which I think looks particularly cool. Rather, the indices are connected to the chaptering at the edge and they just float over that green surface, sometimes even casting a little bit of a shadow. And I think this adds even more to that shimmering watery optical illusion. It's an interesting dial to say the least. And overall, I think it strikes a good balance between subtle and interesting. You see, when you get up close, you really see the ethereal nature of that dial. It's fascinating. Yet at the same time, from a distance, it looks like any ordinary green dial diver. That is, if you consider green dial divers to be ordinary. With this one, I think the best thing you can do is just take this dial in for a bit and see for yourself how you feel about it. I will say that it is one of the best green dial divers I've seen. This one is more about the uniqueness of its combination, rather than any one particular element really standing out. Combining the tungsten bezel with the mother of pearl dial and floating indices, I haven't seen anything else quite like it. 
However, other than that, I gotta say it's still a fairly standard diver. And even though it has a terrific striking look, I mean, this is one that definitely wants to be noticed. It's still a watch with great contrast. Everything coming through clearly and easily. It's just with a very pronounced presence. And especially so on the rubber strap. The first time I wore it was on that green strap and my wife noticed it immediately from across the room. She was just like, what is that? And she did like it. In fact, if it wasn't too big for a wrist, she probably would steal it. So overall, it's a pretty good looking watch. But if we really do want to get into the macro nitpickery, is that even a word? But if we want to get into it, I got to point out that there is a little bit of scuffing on the indices, as well as the edges of the hands could definitely be finished better, at least for a watch starting around 800 bucks. And Loom. Loom could be better here, at least for the price. The dial does fade out a little quicker than I would like, whereas the hands almost keep up with a Seiko Monster. So overall, I'd say Loom is good enough, but it's obvious here that Loom really wasn't a priority when they were designing it. Otherwise, it would at least be as good as that Seiko. As for the movement, here they're using a Sleeta SW200, a Swiss high beat movement that is fairly proven and well liked in the watch world. More importantly, at this price point, it's what you'd expect. So overall, a good pairing, which you could also say about the bracelet. The bracelet has a beautiful H-Link style, one that's mostly brushed except for a very polished midsection. It's definitely eye-catching, and I love how curved each link is. The bracelet as a whole has solid links secured with screws, a good taper going from 22 down to 18, and a butterfly clasp. Overall, a really good bracelet, but that last bit, the butterfly clasp, may be a controversial choice for a diver. And for me, I think it's a bit of a negative just because there's no micro adjusts on it. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to get that perfect fit or even an adjustable fit like a lot of divers are doing these days with an on the fly adjustable clasp. That, and even though it looks like it, these really aren't female end links. There is a little bit of a flex to it, but that first midsection is pretty much locked in place, leading to a slightly longer effective lug to lug. So again, it's a good bracelet, but maybe not the ideal bracelet for a diver. As for price and value, well, this one is currently listed at 760 if you just want the strap. If you want the bracelet, it's 845. And that's 845 US, which is a bit, but overall isn't bad these days for a watch with the Sleeta SW200. Although things get a little bit confusing with this diver line, as there are so many different variations and very different price points for each, which in some ways is a good thing. Options are never bad and you can pick exactly what you want. But at the same time, I think it kind of dilutes the value of the design. And that perhaps they should have done a new diver design when they started using the Sleetas and the tungsten bezels. If for no other reason than just to illustrate more of what they can do. Now at this price point, everyone always seems to bring up Christopher Ward. So I might as well compare it. And from the Christopher Wards I've seen, I'm going to say that Christopher Ward is definitely going to be better in most ways. And especially with her light catcher cases, those things are fantastic. However, remember Christopher Ward prices are also up these days as well. And the cheapest diver with a bracelet is gonna be 1100 bucks. So it is a bit more. So while there are definitely some things I would improve here, overall, it's not bad for the price. Although I just noticed right now that that 760 might be a pre-sale price. And if it is, then this may be a different story. However, the bigger problem here is at this price point, and as you get closer to a thousand bucks, there's a lot of competition and specifically well-known brand name competition. And as much as I like how this one looks with its striking, fantastical presence, and as much as I think it would be great for someone who wants a capable diver that's a bit different, I still come back to the fact that there's nothing really game-changing or groundbreaking here. It's a very interesting combination at a pretty decent price. And I do appreciate the creativity and willingness to take a risk. And if you are looking for a good diver, then this one is definitely worth your consideration. It's just that there are a lot of other watches in this price range that are also worth your consideration. Now, ultimately, how you like the design should be the key deciding factor. Because if you're buying something just based on price, you may not like it in the long run, then you just wind up selling it. And if you like green, this green dial with reflective tungsten bezel is pretty eye-catching. But 
At the same time, I gotta tell you, if you're on the fence with this and a couple of other different watches, I'm just not seeing anything here that's really gonna give this a distinct edge over those other watches. I mean, the tungsten bezel is a great idea, but ceramic's not bad either. The green mother pearl dial is cool and captivating, but so are a lot of fume dials, and some of those special edition Seikos are fantastic. So good watch and definitely worth considering, but at this price, it's not necessarily an easy decision. However, take this design and add a dial and sapphire covered bezel that uses that light absorbing paint. The one they're using on their other watch, well then, then you'd have something pretty interesting. But what do you think about it? The brand, the watch, all of it, let me know down below. Or if you know of another watch that does it better, let me know that too. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, then like, comment, subscribe, do something down below. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.